Seven and a half minutes, sir. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Give me 12. Give me 12. Give me 12. <laughs> well, let me give you a caution. I, I work for an airline. We're never on time. So. <laughs> but you know, the, the government, in their wisdom, believe it or not, if you're within 15 minutes, you can sit on time. So, not that. I need some of her energy. Let me get a little biography first, because some of you know of me. Maybe you haven't met me. I live as far north in Delaware as you can get. When you make a wrong turn from where I live, this country road next to Ashton Nature Center, the next sign says Kennett Square. And I want to kind of keep it that way. It's a nice place to live. I can hunt deer with a claw hammer. It's a nice place. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but I thought about it. Been married almost 32 years this June. We have two children. Oldest son is a uh, doctor up in a place called Yale Medical. He's a surgery resident. So hang on to your health in a few years. He'll be the guy that can help you here in Delaware. He's on his way to be a vascular surgeon. And my next son is uh, a college student. We've got one more year of him in college. And he's, uh, like I said last night, Mr. Happy Go Lucky. Wants to get a degree in economics. And uh, I told the crowd last night, he ran for this position at college to be under Senate. Which surprised me. So I said, well, how'd you do that? And he said, well, you know, Facebook, Twitter, a lot of these electronic things. I said, well, what about door knocking? And he goes, well, only in the girls' dorms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. No, no, no. <coughs> Folk, let, let's get down to some serious business here. The Republican Party, as I said last night, at the link, not Lincoln, uh, partly debate, if we were a private corporation, we'd be filing for bankruptcy. We're bankrupt in many ways. John mentioned money. I can verify that. We're seriously in the hole. We're bankrupt in more important things, which is vision, ideas, and certain leadership at the state level. Now, when you file for bankruptcy, I worked for a corporation called Delta Airlines. I went through that. It's a very unpleasant thing to do. You have to have something called a reorganization plan. I put one together, and I'll have copies for you afterwards. 17 pages long. It's got a communications plan technology plan, new bylaws, a timeline for recovery, and get this, a platform. We do not have an official platform as a Republican Party of Delaware. Now, if you're selling a business product, trying to develop a relationship, somewhere along the way, somebody wants to know what do you stand for, who are you, what do you mean to me? Now, I was explained a few months ago, the reason we don't have a platform is people may not like what we say. Now, truly, I was guided by one of our previous statewide officials who just didn't want one. It's time to have one to draw people into the interest the Republican Party offers. Now, the reasons why this is so uh, terribly important, what Ruth brought up, it's amazing. If you look back in time, folks, and sorry about talking with my hands, it's a pilot thing. You look at the decline of the Republican Party the last 20 years, I think it's a very rational thought and belief so has the state of Delaware. And everything I think might be important. Safe streets, good neighborhoods, economic growth, fiscal stability, everything. If you could track that, it's all gone downhill. So you have to surmise, is it going to get any better with the Democrats in charge? After what I saw last week, I don't think so. I say it's drifting into more and more nonsense, it has nothing to do with reality. Nothing to do with businesses, nothing to do with jobs or families. So again, when we go back to what a business files for bankruptcy, which we are on the verge of as a Republican Party, you have an obligation to your shareholders. We have an obligation to the voters and citizens of the state of Delaware to offer a better vision. Right now, they don't know what we stand for. We haven't been very good at inviting some of them in. It's time to change all that. Because I can tell you, being in a business environment, when you fail, it's terrible. It stinks. But there's always good news and bad news. The bad news is a rock bottom. The good news is time to go up. And it's been a real pleasure to be with John and Don and some of these other events, realizing quality, serious individuals, not me, but these guys, want to be chairman of the party. I. Corralled one of the district chairs last night in Kent County and said, did you ever think something like this would happen? He goes, no. Which, that's a good thing. Now, the alternative is further decline or if we can step up to the plate and offer a very positive vision. We have to reestablish our credibility all over the state, but primarily 
in Newcastle County. This district meeting here, this is a grand idea. I know you have them every month. I've lived in my district now for nine years. I can guarantee I've spent a total of maybe 100 minutes in district meetings. And that's it. <coughs> I think when we change our bylaws, we ought to formalize the structure of the party. So we strengthen the structure and open up the process where every region has minority outreach, veterans outreach, small business, technology, communication. Not to give everybody titles and positions, but to give everybody accountability, responsibility, and grow the party. We've got to do that. And I'm not talking about some title you just wear and you brag about once in a while. It's something you do with. Same thing at the state level. So I guarantee if you went into the state headquarters right now and asked about the minority outreach, you'd get a blank stare. If I could say, who's the guy in charge of going to the you know, American Legion halls, to the VFWs, to do the outreach? I think the stare would be even longer. Nine and a half percent of Delaware are veterans. So we're missing the mark in many ways. And I'm not looking to make a whole lot of rules and regulations. That's not my goal. I'm trying to give form and structure to an organization that reminds me of a kindergarten class in many ways. Um, I'm being very honest. I mean, when you go into the headquarters, I come out thinking, I'm, I might start drinking again. That's how despondent you can get. But then I go out to meetings like this, and I see, all, just like last night, 140 people. That's where you get your inspiration from, not from the headquarters. Truly, the grassroots. We've got to build from the bottom up. Because I think about, and I'm all about family. That's all that matters to me. I've never saw a great wealth, fame, or fortune. It's all about kids. My oldest son's at the point, he turns 31 next month, Hey, Clint, where do you think you're going to establish your practice? And of course, I'm, I'm chum in the water, you know. I'm thinking Delaware. He's thinking, Dad, I don't know. i got to think on that one. So it was my wife, Elle, supposed to hey, get it? Gotta get it. Well, look, I can't do that. He's an adult. Because he looks at the things that we deal with as citizens, things Ruth brought up, how bad the state's being run, and he's got questions. Maybe I just don't want to do that. So I have a vested interest, but I also see the policy of the Democrats, and I make this joke. But I was asked about two weeks ago, why are the Democrats so out of touch? And I was a Boy Scout leader for, for 12 years, and I remember, because teenage boys don't have the ability for something called sequential thought. They can't process information in sequence and make logical decisions. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Nor can teenage boys possess something called consequential knowledge. They can't prioritize what's important, they just know what's in front of them. Democrats are the same way. We're the ones that have to dig real deep, offer a very valued message, and the kind of stuff that Kevin's putting out. We have a poverty of those kind of things in the Republican Party because it has not been encouraged. In fact, it's been squelched. <coughs> so my offer to you is, not the same old, same old. Bring more people in. And as our fortunes increase and prosper in the Republican Party, so will the state of Delaware. That's a, a good god awful fact. That's the truth. And if we don't do what we're responsible for, the state of Delaware, think about it, we are the first state. When I meet people around the country and I fly, most of them don't really quite know where Delaware is. They know two things about, well, now three things. Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. They know we're kind of the first state. They know something with the Constitution, and we're kind of near Philadelphia. And you got all those companies there. But it's almost a shame to think we're the first state of the Union and we're facing such total disarray, both in our party and our government leadership. So I'll close with that because I need to sit here a long time this morning. But while I'm realistic about the problems, I'm completely, totally optimistic about the possibilities. I wouldn't be interested in doing this. I'm married to a lovely woman. I'd like to spend more time with her. It's awfully nice being empty nesters. I have a mother lives up the road at the Delaware Veterans Home. Who most days doesn't know who I am, but I love seeing her. I could do other things. But the energy I could put into this will pay dividends for years to come. So I'll be quiet because I think you have questions. And I'm not sure if Don's talking or not, but thank you for your patience. Thanks for being involved more than anything else. <coughs> Thanks, Don. We'll open the questions up now.